Okay, this session is the server that goes ping. Uh, my name is Emmanuel Gaillot. Uh, I work at a company called Utesat. This is a French company. And I help uh, coders to, to, to get better at what they're doing. Uh, that's what I do. And what we're going to do today is, uh, what is it? It's, do, do, do you, uh, are you familiar with, with a game called Minecraft? No, yes, somehow, some, okay. Oh. Minecraft is a game where uh, you have a server and you connect to that server and many people can play at the same time on that server and, and you can assemble things. It's a bit like the Legos, but uh, in a virtual world. Uh, and actually, it's more than that. But uh, so that's one thing. Uh, and we don't say much about that. Uh, Minecraft servers implement a Minecraft protocol, uh, and in that protocol, there is one part that, 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 that is a ping. And a ping, if you ping a Minecraft server, the, the Minecraft server will tell you stuff about, uh, uh, about the server itself. For instance, it, it can, can you actually read this, or this is too small? Mm -hmm. This is very small, is that? No? Okay, let's do this. So it can tell you the, the, the protocol version it implements, it can tell you the version the server has, some kind of message, and, and this is what we're interested in today, which is the current player count. So let's say we want to implement something that looks like this. Um, this is a website that actually lists some Minecraft servers, and uh, if you look at it, we, we, we see versions here, and we see players, and so for instance, on this server right now, there is about 24 players, <coughs> and uh, over 150 possible. So that's the max number of players that you can have in that server. And, and right now, currently, there's 24 players connected, right? And we'd like to implement uh, a web server uh, that at least display that number, okay? And, and maybe we can do more, we'll see. But uh, uh, that's, that's the goal, that's what I'm trying to do. Okay, so, uh, let's get rid of this. Good. Uh, I am going uh, to do this in Node.js uh, uh, with GoForScript and TDD. Uh, so, let's see. Start, so, so, so there's stuff here I don't really care about, but uh, if I go here, there's nothing. That's, that's the beginning. So I start, uh, and, and what I will show you is actually how I do this. Uh, there's probably a lot of ways of doing this. There's probably a lot of tools to do this. Um, my intention is just to show you something, something I do, and, and maybe uh, provoke a discussion with you guys, saying, oh, this is strange. I wouldn't do it this way or that way or whatever. Uh, this is what I do. So uh, uh, when I do this kind of things, I start with uh, uh, initiating an npm uh, package uh, descriptor. Uh, NPM, I don't know if you're familiar with it, it's a tool that, uh, it's a, uh, a package manager for Node. Uh, it's kind of a bit like uh, Gems in Ruby mm -hmm. or Maven in, in Java. It's not exactly the same, but, but it's roughly the same. So uh, uh, there's, there's a wizard assisting me here saying, do you want that name? Yes, uh, version is fine, description, uh, description is, uh, this is uh, Minecraft uh, Paint Server. And uh, the entry point won't be that, but it's going to be uh, the coffee uh, script. Um, I will have tests, yes. Uh, I'm going to use Watcher. Uh, and since I'm using uh, coffee script, I say whenever you find uh, a coffee extension file, uh, just run it with coffee script. Uh, there won't be a Git repository. Do you guys have keywords for this? I don't know. Keywords thing. Um, the other, this is me. Uh, whatever. Um, all right. Yes. Uh, I'm going to write. Um, can you actually, you, you can't read what's there, right? Now, yeah, that's, that's two, two at the bottom. Let's see if I can actually do something about this. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you still read it, the bottom? Yeah? Yeah? Yes? Okay, good. Um, okay. 
So now we're ready to start. So I start with the test, mm -hmm. and this says you don't have anything installed. So I'm going to install the match file for, for start. Uh, and I'm going to keep, uh, I'm going to record the version uh, I'm using so that, let's say, if, if other people would like to, to continue this project or download some, some things and, and, and work on their own on it, they would have the, uh, the exact version that I'm using so that there, there wouldn't be compatibility issues. Yes. And uh, network, yes, it's working. Okay, good. Um, I have a question. Already, uh, yes. Maybe a bit of a topic about N and you know, so Is it possible to deploy it with a enterprise on an enterprise server or for an enterprise repository? Because right now you're downloading it from somewhere. Yes. You, you, uh, if internet was not working now, uh, it would default to a local repository on my machine, uh, which it doesn't. Uh, but you could have like you, you could specify your own repository uh, somewhere. Yes. Um, okay, you cannot find uh, a cut script. Actually, I did write it well, so let's correct this. Uh, it's not cof script, but cofi script. <coughs> And okay. So I've already typed twice npm test, and I am I'm already tired of doing this, so I, I will uh, create a loop to do that. And since I have kind of trouble, um, maybe you can can you still somehow read this? Is, or is this already too small? No, it's, it's okay. As soon as something uh, isn't clear enough, please let me know. So this is some kind of auto test uh, that I, uh, I just write like in two seconds. Uh, okay, so this says there's no test to run, but at least uh, the system is working. I have uh, uh, a timer here that tells me what time it is now, but most most important it tells me if uh, the tests have hung or not, so I know if if I'm locked or not. Uh, right, okay, so I could write my first test. Uh, so, uh, I will call that, uh, it's the Minecraft ping project. Uh, I want to put that in the test directory. Uh, so, much is a bit like, it, it, it's kind of the BDD style where you describe a fixture and, the, a fixture and then you, 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 you uh, specify some, some behavior. So let's say I have, uh, I will start with the, with the HTTP server. I, I want to have like a web server to which I can connect to and it will tell me things. So uh, Minecraft uh, ping server uh, does things. And the first thing I want to check is uh, whether I can actually make a test fails. Make a test fail. Uh, it fails, okay. And uh, so Mocha is a, is a test runner, but I need an expectation uh, assertion library, and I will use expect.js. Uh, I will download this in a second. Uh, so let's say I want to make sure that false is always okay, which of course is not. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, so I have like a bunch of errors uh, because uh, I don't have expect.js, so. Download it. Uh, okay. Yes. All right. Uh, now I have uh, a, a failing test. I can't see much because there's too much crap. Uh, uh, the, the, the whole of the, the, the room is taken by no modules, uh, stack tracer. Uh, so I will actually uh, skip those so that I can see more about what's going on. Um, let's say. Okay. Now it tells me, okay, I. Uh, uh, 
I expected false to be truthy, to be okay, and this is not the case. So can I actually make this pass? Probably. Okay, now it's passing. So I have, I, I have my uh, uh, test environment working, and I can actually write something that's available to the project. Um, and let's say the first thing I want to uh, to see is that the server actually tells me uh, uh, tells uh, how many players are connected. Uh, that's going to be my first step. So uh, the way I'll do this is I will request uh, 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 some HTTP GET uh, request. Uh, and let's say that would be a server that's uh, on localhost, uh, a machine, some port. Uh, and the way I want to do this is uh, I would like to specify uh, some Minecraft server uh, URL uh, and port. Uh, which could be anything. Uh, and say, whenever I request this URL uh, on some kind of local server, uh, I would get either an error or a response. Uh, and whenever I get this, uh, I would like to, ex uh, to check that uh, the response body uh, equals to stuff, um, uh, actually, uh, to, equal, uh, to some stuff. Um, and I will make a step, a first baby step, which would be, can it actually uh, tell me bonjour? Uh, uh, I don't see that. Now, the thing is, uh, because notice uh, uh, just one event loop and, and uh, everything's asynchronous, uh, I somehow need uh, to tell the test uh, to wait for the, uh, for the response uh, to do something. Otherwise, nothing will really happen. So first, I'm going to get uh, uh, the request library. Uh, which helps me um, to test web servers. Uh, no, I didn't want to do that. Request. Okay. So what I was saying, um, if if I just run this test this way, it will say pass because whenever it goes here and say okay request uh, request some HTTP GET request to this URL, and whenever you're done, just check something. But eventually, what will happen is that uh, the program will get out of, the, uh, out of this instruction without doing anything, and say, OK, nothing got wrong, because I didn't, uh, uh, I didn't have the time to actually get the response from the server, didn't have the time to do the expect that I was already out of the uh, tests, uh, and everything uh, looks like it's working, whereas it is not working at all. Okay, so I have a request and it says things. Uh, see, it says somehow it's working, but it's kind of jig. We don't know exactly what's going on. Uh, and this is because uh, I need to uh, resynchronize my tests with uh, some asynchronous uh, behavior. So what am I doing? Uh, okay. So I will say just call that done callback when you're done. Meaning, right now, uh, uh, what will happen is that. Uh, my test will uh, wait for it, the done callback to be called, and actually in that callback I have next test. Uh, and if something doesn't go well, like now, I will have actually I have another problem. Yes, uh, I'm not even having the uh, uh, the done problem right now. What what I have is that I can't read the body property here because response is not set. Response is not set probably because there's some error before. So I can actually say, well, you know what, if there's an error, uh, uh, tell me. So if I, the, the convention is that if I uh, call uh, the callback done with some value, uh, it means that this is an error. And, and this is what I get here. It says, okay, you're trying to request that server, which is a web server on localhost and on uh, 1789 port, but actually nothing is, uh, is actually uh, plugged at that port, and, and I have like a refused connection. Uh, my localhost server uh, uh, says you can't connect to that. So uh, first I have somehow to say I have a server. So uh, I would say that my server would be uh, the pink server. Uh, and uh, that would be from a module, and I would create my ping server, and say, listen, 
uh, on the port uh, that I've specified. And when you're ready to listen, then do that. Okay, MCP doesn't exist. Uh, I need to tell that this is my local uh, under test module. So I'll put this in some source uh, repository just to separate things a bit. Um, okay, and okay. So now let's see if I can actually do stuff. Okay, yeah, we're still there. Not so bad. Okay, so uh, right now we, we don't see well, actually, if we reduce this a bit. Can you actually still read it? Or not? Or maybe not? Yes, somehow? Okay. Um, it says uh, that it cannot find uh, the module, nothing exists. So if I save this, uh, does it change? Yes. Now it says, okay, um, uh, when I require this module, I have like an empty object that doesn't have uh, a method create ping server. Um, so I'll do this. Uh, I'll create that method. Uh, so when I want to export something from module, I need to put it in that variable, specific variable that's called, that's called module exports. And I will say, well, this uh, actually exports uh, a, a function. Just create page server, and this is a function itself. Okay, and on that function, uh, there would be another one, uh, which is a listen. Okay. And now, now that everything is uh, somehow executing well, it says, well, there's a timeout. Timeout comes from here, so I don't have an error. I can actually somehow do something. Uh, with the request? Yes. No. Oh, this is French. Uh, okay. Not really what I was expecting. The thing is, uh, this listen is not really what I want. What I want is uh, an HTTP server. Uh, so I'll create a server. Uh, and is that enough? Well, it's enough to uh, to have something listening on that port. However, uh, it's not enough. It, the, the server doesn't answer anything, so I have to say, uh, okay, whenever you get a connection, uh, actually do something with it. So that would be, you have a socket, and uh, write something, actually write and close, uh, and that would be clip. So now I'm doing it somewhere. Okay, object, yes, that's in the way I'm supposed to do it, apparently. Um, yes, this one. Sorry about this. Actually, this is so okay too. No, it doesn't either. Okay, uh, I have. You have a type. Sorry, what? You have a type. Sorry, say this. Look at the sample, and. It's it's like write and end the connection. Uh, actually, yes, I know why. This is because I'm confusing two APIs. One is with uh, the net, like a TCP server, but the web server is a bit different, it's more elaborate. I have a request and a response. Comes back to me. Uh, okay. Better. Okay, now so I can actually respond something. Uh, hello, but I was expecting bonjour. Uh, so if I actually write what I want to write, it's better. Okay. And what I have? Yes, I have my first bit test passing. Good. Uh, I can actually check if something is working. Right now, I mean, this is all in the test. So uh, I want to <coughs> create some kind of main entry, uh, which would be uh, my server. So I would have like uh, some kind of something that resembles what I had in my tests. Uh, I want to require, uh, okay. And I have a server, uh, which would be my uh, ping server. Uh, okay, and I would like to listen some port. Uh, there, there, there would be a port, uh, port. Uh, 
and whenever I'm ready, whenever you're listening, just, just warn me that you're ready. my server so if now I do uh, something like this uh, make coffee all right it launched the, the the server and it says I'm listening so if I go say I'm going uh, open okay, new Safari page uh, here making some advertisement for Apple uh, localhost yes this one so see it says bonjour right here Okay, and, and if I get this, uh, we'll say it's not working. Okay, good, so uh, so it's not so bad. Um, I am going to get very tired very soon also, uh, just to go to the, to the browser, so uh, I, I will use another method to do this, uh, which is uh, to curl, to, to have like a, a, a test, uh, uh, sorry, a text entry of this. So say, um, again, I would like to, uh, to ping uh, a Minecraft server that I would have on my machine, say, um, on this port, which is like the usual regular port. Actually, if I do this, you'll see it more. Um, so that's the regular port. And, and see what happens if I do that. It says bonjour. OK, this is a bit ugly. Yeah, it's a bit better. Uh, and again, I would like to uh, do this forever. Clear curl, echo, date, uh, sleep, and do it again. Okay. Um, so this is the, uh, the 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 output of my server. And the thing is, uh, anytime I will change something in, in that code, uh, I will need to stop and restart the server, uh, which again I know that I will get very tired of uh, very soon. So um, instead. I'm going to use uh, uh, something to relaunch the server any time that uh, I actually uh, do something with it. So I'm using this uh, package called NodeMon, uh, uh, which will do exactly what I want. So NodeMon uh, will actually uh, look for a target, the main coffee here. So, and it will say, OK, any time that something changes in your uh, directory, uh, I will stop uh, that process that, that uh, started main coffee, and I will restart it again. Let's see, uh, okay, so I need to install this. Uh, so it's here right now. It's uh, do this, and it lasts forever. Yeah. Okay. Um, good. So now if I do npm start, uh, it will do what I wanted. Uh, actually, can you see this? Uh, npm start started Nodima, uh, and is watching, it, it's starting actually uh, that process, coffee main coffee, uh, and because it started it, it's now listening to that part. So this is what I want. That's good. If I change something here, if I say I don't want to listen to that part anymore, uh, but to that one, See, it's starting again, and now it's listening to the other one. Pretty cool. OK, I'm going back to that one. So uh, what I wanted is not uh, a web server that says bonjour, actually, but something more uh, on the line of uh, this. So Minecraft uh, server, uh, right now they would be able to say 34 players connected. That's what I would like to see. Uh, so of course, the tests are not passing anymore. And <coughs> Say, uh, uh, let's see, how can I do this? Because I don't have, uh, I'm, I'm actually totally faking that uh, uh, server. Let's see, let's see how it goes. Uh, go back to that. Uh, so I know this is not bonjour that I want. Uh, what I would like more is uh, uh, something, so there would be like a host, uh, 
and a colon and like players number. Uh, number of players. Just have to write any more. Uh, and you would say players connected. Good. So this will crash because uh, there's many things that are already fine. See, so, so my server has scratched now. It's not working. I can't connect to the host. Uh, actually, I don't. I don't have like, enough clue about this. So, uh, as a homage uh, to the Monty Python movie, uh, Meaning of Life, in which you have the machine that goes big, uh, I'll actually say, can you, can you actually say something if this works? So, can you actually say beep? So, it's not saying beep at all. If I go back to where I had, okay, now I know that. Uh, it is working. Uh, if I go back here, not working anymore. So um, that would be not cute. Uh, let's see if I can actually budge this very quickly. Um, so I'm going to have a host. Uh, the host somehow I can uh, see from the URL. Uh, and the number of players uh, would be some strange things. OK, well, now I have my well. Yes, um, so the, the output is totally crazy, but uh, uh, I see here uh, the output that I'm getting. So it's close enough. Uh, I need to get rid of that uh, first slash, uh, which I can do by removing the first uh, character. And this says I'm going to take the, the, the string, but for the second character to the end. Um, apparently, this is not working now. This is crazy. It's already driving me crazy. Um, request URL slice one. I would expect this to work. Hmm. What if I split? Something is wrong. Um, I would expect uh, something to move here. Oh, yes. See here? Um, that number doesn't change anymore. Something high. Actually, this is the, uh, I was not looking the right thing. Okay, so let's get back to where I was. I was here. Um, see, I got rid. Okay, I was here. When I was here, I had this slash here, uh, and I didn't want it, so I removed it uh, by saying I'm taking just from the second character to the end of the chain uh, of the string. And here, I would like to separate what's before that slash and after. So I'm going to make a split. Okay. Uh, now, see, this is this is the output of an array here. So there's there's a comma here. This comma is not exactly here, but now I can actually assign uh, uh, the first part uh, of that array to host and second part to port, and uh, hopefully, yes. See, now I have the right uh, uh, address here, the right server uh, URL. However, I don't have the right number of players. And I could fake this, but I know that this is not what I want. Um, what I really want is I'd like to delegate uh, this to some kind of pinger, some, something that my web server could actually say to delegate the, uh, the responsibility to actually ping the server and do stuff. So um, I'd like to have like a pinger. Uh, which would be something that has, right now I'm, I'm, I'm totally blocking it, but uh, that would have like a ping method, uh, and I know that I need the host, uh, the port, and some sort of callback to call back when, when I have some answer. Uh, and ideally, I'd like the callback to tell me the number uh, of players I have. Uh, uh, so let's say that I'd like to have. 30. I'm, I'm faking the fact that uh, my finger tells me there's 34 players. Uh, yes, that's the number I had here. And uh, I would like to plug this uh, into the server that I'm uh, instantiating. Okay. So, how does that work here? Uh, I have the finger. And here, I would like to call that finger. I would like to call the, the, the ping method in that finger uh, with a host and the port. 
And some sort of callback that would say, whenever you get the number of players from what you're doing, just, just, just do this. Oops. Just do this. And as you see now, my test is great. It is working. So I have plugged uh, successfully my finger into my web server. However, the server has crashed. And this has to do with the fact that I need to change uh, my main uh, program. Because now I'm calling for a pinger uh, that doesn't exist. Uh, so I need to do something with that. And for now, again, uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, fake it uh, and say, well, this is something that has a hub support uh, and, and a callback. And I don't know if you have like a favorite number of players that we could have, let's say, 42. Uh, okay, it's working again. And now, see, it says that I have 42 players connected. Yeah, not so bad. Um, so it's time now to defake uh, that pinger and, and see if I can actually do something better about this. So I'm going to have like, uh, uh, another fixture that we call the pinger, uh, uh, A. Uh, that effort, that, that finger would ping, uh, not if, but it, uh, it, it would ping uh, a Minecraft server, but a real one this time, or not a real one, but a Minecraft server. Uh, <coughs> so there's a whole protocol about this, and if we go to that for a second, uh, shut up. Uh, so this is how it works. Uh, uh, the client initiated a TCP connection, so we're not in the HTTP world anymore. Uh, so it's just TCP. Uh, and I need to send a two byte sequence that is FE01. Okay? So I'll do this. And when I do this, the server will answer uh, FF kick packet, um, followed by stuff and more stuff. And we'll see that later on. But for now, let's say I really want uh, to connect to a server. And, and check I can actually do this. Um, okay, so I would have like a pinger. Uh, the idea is that I want to ping something. Um, there, that, that would be uh, uh, a server I have a local host, uh, some run port. Uh, and remember, we have that this number of players. Well, we won't do anything about this for now, actually. Uh, okay. So that's, that's the call I want to make. Uh, and I want to check that if I have actually a server uh, uh, started, uh, something should happen. So let's say I'm faking uh, uh, a Minecraft server, not with HTTP this time, but with the net, with the TCP interface uh, uh, API. Uh, OK, so I create a server, and I want to listen to that server on the port I specified, which was this one. Okay, now what I want to say is that whenever uh, you get a connection to that server, you're done. Uh, pinger is not defined. Pinger is not defined. Uh, yes, I need to define it. Pinger uh, comes from my MCP package uh, and would create <coughs> Okay, now it says I don't have the create uh, uh, finger method. And I know this is a function. And that function should <coughs> have like a ping function too. Ping method. Okay, now I have it, but it says the test is completed, which is odd. This is odd, but no, this is because I didn't say this is an asynchronous test. So. Okay, now it says I have a timeout. I didn't get quickly enough to that part, meaning actually I didn't uh, connect it to that server. So this is what I'm going to do now. Uh, so when I call ping uh, with a host port and a callback, uh, when I call ping, uh, what I want to do is actually create a socket to that server, uh, that TCP server. It's not a, that's require net. Uh, and 
the way I do this is I connect. So the, the, the API says I need to first specify the port and then the host. It's a bit weird, but that's the way it goes. And uh, when I do this, well, let's see what happens. Uh, okay, see, now uh, the, the tests are green because I actually get something. But we know from that interface, we know that this is not just enough to connect that server. Actually, we need to send, to initiate uh, the, uh, the discussion uh, by, by sending this two byte sequence FE01. Um, so the way I can do this is saying, well, server, uh, whenever you get a connection, actually, you'll get a, uh, you're get a socket to that connection. You want to say that when the when that socket gets data, yeah, you want that data to be something very specific uh, uh, to equal. I'm doing a loose equal here because I, I'm going to compare uh, values of uh, uh, objects and not the the the, the ID, the, the address of the object. So I want this to equal uh, a buffer. Uh, that would be FE01 in hex, hexadecimal. And when, when I've expected this, I want to be done. And the test again saying, well, I didn't receive any data, so I don't go to do this, and I don't go to the done uh, callback soon enough. Uh, so when I connect to that port, uh, I know that I will get a socket to that server, and uh, I want to actually write something uh, on that second. Uh, and what I want to write specifically is FE01, but uh, just to make the test pay first, uh, let's write something like this. And, okay. See, now we have a different error. We said uh, we got into the done part. Uh, uh, we, we got into the data part, but we said we expected FE01 and we got FE02. Well, now I can make this pass very quickly uh, by doing this. And it is working. Good. Uh, but again, this is not enough because the server needs to send something back and I need the, the finger to read it. Uh, uh, so the way I do it is I don't really want to. <coughs> That's part of the expectation, but I want something more. Uh, I want that number of players uh, to act, I want to verify the number of players I get back uh, and say to equal whatever, 337. Uh, and I'd like, uh, whenever I have some data, I would like to, to write something uh, on the socket again to just simulate the fact that the server uh, answers something. And that could be uh, what I'm looking for. Okay. And I need to remove the dot and put dot here. Okay. Again, I didn't get uh, to the part where uh, any players, uh, uh, to, to where the callback is called, uh, because I don't call the callback. Um, so I could do something like, uh, when I get some data from the server, whatever the data is, how about we just send it back. What does it do? Oh, well, that's interesting. Uh, what I send back is the buffer, whereas I'm uh, looking for a number. Hmm. So I could do something like this. Uh, I could just parse the data uh, and, and get the answer, which would work, but somehow that doesn't feel really right, because I know that uh, actually the parsing will be a bit more complicated than that. Uh, there, there's all kind of sequence. Um, so this this parsing thing builds more into some sort of analyzer, some parser that I like to plug into the finger. And and for now, for in my tests, it could be a very simple parser, or it could be something more complicated when I get into the real case. So what I would like to do is is to have a parser uh, that I could that could that could parse the data. Actually, so I would need to pass the parser here, uh, and that parser for now 
could be what I'm looking for. Uh, so again, that would be fake. Uh, that would be a function that takes a buffer and that sends back what? Uh, uh, the parser that I was looking for. Okay. And that pinger should have the parser. Okay, now it's working, which is pretty good. Um, so now I have a full pinger uh, that actually connects to the server, uh, transmit the data it receives to some kind of parser, and returns the result from the parser when it has it. Pretty cool. I would like to integrate this and, and to actually ship it somehow. So if I go back to my main, uh, now I can use the real pinger. Uh, so let's say my pinger actually is uh, Create finger, I need a parser, remember? And that parser for now will uh, would be again fake. Uh, that takes a buffer. And well that returns the buffer. Let's see how it goes. Okay, something crashed. Okay, what is going on? Uh, Okay, I, it says that I don't want to connect to that. Which is, okay. So this is somehow working, but I don't have a Minecraft server launched on my machine. So I could go to some places where I know I have uh, everything ready for that. And I could launch the server. All right. So my server is now launched and if I actually do something. Okay, it's working again. Now uh, uh, we have a server that actually sends back something that is really linked to, to the server, this kind of junk here. Uh, so we're making progress. We can keep in mind that we're not really resilient to errors, that whenever we're requesting a ping to a server that doesn't exist, uh, the, 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 the web server crash, which is not cool, uh, but we can uh, uh, get to that part later on. Let's, let's for now work on the nominal case. Okay, so I have this junk, uh, and this junk actually is linked to what it says here. Okay, so when, when uh, I, I do a ping, first I get a FF sequence, followed by a 2 byte big NDN that tells me the length of whatever follows, then stuff, and that stuff is starts with uh, uh, with uh, uh, the sequence 0087, 0031, 0000. Okay, and then I have so everything I have is big again UCS2 string, which means that this is a Unicode string on two bytes, uh, and it's big again. Okay, meaning that if I go to uh, this example, this would read, for instance, this is the 007 uh, that I have here, and 0031, and then uh, the separation, and then I have this 0034, which in Big Indian reads as the character 4, which we we'll see here. Uh, and 4 actually is Actually, this is yeah, the first character of the string that follows, and I have the 0037, which is 7, and 4 and 7 is 47, and that's the protocol version. Okay, so that's how it works. So if I get back uh, to my code, well, I can't see really much what's going on here because uh, this is totally garbled, but if instead of passing the buffer, I pass something that's a conversion uh, of hexadecimals, uh, Maybe, yes. Now I get a sequence. Uh, and we see that the sequence somehow matches the, the specification. First we have the FF uh, uh, key packet, and then we have the first uh, two byte big Indian uh, 0023, which means I have 2 times 16 plus 3, which is 35, if I'm correct. Uh, so that means I have 35 characters following. Remember, this is two bytes uh, for each character and this is beginning. 
I have the A731 again sequence, the 00, uh, which is separator, and then I have 3631, so that reads like 61 is the version of the protocol and some more stuff. Uh, what I'm interested in right now in the end is this, uh, which I'm going to, I'm uh, sorry. Uh, Stop this for now. Okay, I'm interested in this number here, uh, and I know because I've read this forever that this means zero, and this is number of player connected on my server, which is zero. Um, okay, so I would like to extract this, and this would be my pressure. Uh, and actually, I will need to have some kind of buffer, so I'll take it. Help me. Okay, I'm gonna copy this uh, and get back to my code. Okay, so I want to to, to write a parser. Okay, so I'm gonna describe a Minecraft uh, ping sequence parser, uh, and it uh, it can it can tell uh, when uh, a new player. Uh, is connected. Um, okay, so I will make a buffer that I just copied. Uh, in hex, okay, and I will need some kind of parser, uh, which will come from my uh, uh, package. So this is a specific parser, this is not a generic parser. What I want is something that can read the number of players. Uh, okay. And uh, I want to expect that when I parse this, when I when I parse the buffer, uh, what I should get uh, is zero. Okay. So it says, well, there's a lot of stuff that you don't have. So I want to create uh, that thing, uh, which is this one. Uh, this is a function again, uh, which has a parse method. W well, the function returns an object that has a parse method, exactly. Um, and that parse uh, takes a buffer. Works. Hello. And returns zero for now. Okay, good. Um, this is a fake. I want to add uh, a second case. Um, um, several players are connected. So again, I have a buffer. In hex. Um, but I'm going to change this. So I know that this is where uh, the players, the number of players are. So let's say instead of zero player, let's say I want to have eight players. Uh, again, I have my parser. Actually, I will extract this. Uh, so I would have the code before. Uh, I would have this parser. That's the shit once and for all. Uh, I want to inject that. Stop that saying. Okay. At this time, I want it to equal eight. So it says it fails, which is exactly what I was expecting. So that's good. So. I'm going to need to think a bit. I have this sequence. And uh, let's get into Node for a while. OK. Actually, no. Let's get into uh, Coffee. Let's say I have a buffer. So I'll take a smaller buffer than the one that uh, I used. Uh, but that would be 0, 0, 31, 0, 0, 36. So that I want this to be uh, uh, turned into a string <laughs> that would be 16, right? Uh, so that's the buffer I want. And let's somehow to get 16. 
And one way of doing it is to say, I can read this as big endians, uh, as unsigned in big endians. Uh, so I would have the unsigned in 16, it's too much bytes, uh, big endian. With a position to start, for instance, let's say, can I read the first character? And it would say it's 49. Okay. Um, and if I read the second character, so I need to start at 2, which is the third element. Because if I start here, it will take, uh, it will take those two uh, bytes, and that doesn't uh, uh, compute to anything I want. So right now, if I do this, it's working well. So I could do something like this, for instance. Uh, uh, B a length, uh, and just just do two by two, okay, which is what I want. Now, if I go back to what I have, to what I had here, I can I can I can transform this ASCII character uh, ASCII code to some character uh, by calling uh, French R code, uh, which is six. This is trench. Oh yes, because I took the second one. Okay, so. And the first one is one. So that's what I want. I'd love to do this uh, from the array. Uh, but I can't. Somehow it's not working. What I can do, though, because I know the API bit, is I can pass as many uh, characters I want. Uh, so I could do this, for instance, you know, and I would have some more. This 44 is actually uh, uh, not a comma. It's, it's uh, as the code for a comma. All right, so the way I can do this is I have my uh, uh, array, and I can use the split operator uh, in Kofi, which is three dots. And that means transform this array into as many parameters. Uh, and that's what I want. So now if I plug everything back to what I had, uh, so that's my loop, and I can do uh, This. this returns an array, I can split it, and that's what I want. So this is the string I need. Uh, I'm not going to copy this because I'd rather think. Um, okay, so let's say I have some kind of info, info that's as a string. Uh, uh, I'm gonna, uh, uh, okay, so I know that I want the buffer. Uh, and I want to read as an unsigned int uh, two bytes big NGN starting from i for i in what? So it's not zero this time because remember that the first byte is a key packet and the two bytes after that is uh, is about the length of anything I, of anything I want. So I want to start uh, the string actually starts on the third byte. So uh, I'll do so. On the fourth, sorry, the three first back, on the fourth back. Um, so I'm starting at three, uh, going up to the end, uh, but two by two, and split it. Okay, so if I do this, I'll see that now I don't have zero anymore, but I have some kind of sequence that's Unicode, uh, and that's, that's more what I want, so that's, that's good. Um, the only thing is uh, probably that I want actually to split this uh, into. So I want to split. I know from the uh, from the specification again that uh, everything is separated by null characters, which is zero zero. So I can split by any code zero zero like this, and now see I get like this array. Uh, with everything separated, and this is exactly what I wanted. So I can uh, assign again. So I remember for documentation, I will write this uh, that I have header, and then I have the protocol version, and I have the server version, and then I have some kind of mode of the day, uh, and then I have the number of players, which is what I want, and a number max uh, of players, uh, and that's that's what I want. Uh, and really what I want is the number of players. And what I get is the string and not the integer. Uh, so I'm going to be nice and actually convert this into an integer. Okay, and now it's working.
yeah. Can I actually ship that? Well, we'll see. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I have the time to do this. Wonderful. Uh, let's get back to the uh, main program. So now I don't want to have that parser about the real one. Uh, says zero player connected because it, it extracted the zero from uh, the uh, uh, from the buffer I had. Remember when I had this, uh, I had the the hex sequence. And now it's extracting number of pointers. Okay, cool. So I don't need this anymore. And maybe actually it's time uh, to see what's going on here. So remember, I had the, this list of servers. Uh, uh, let's say, okay, maybe I, I can refresh <coughs> it. Uh, all right. So right now, for instance, we have KingCraftMC.com, and there's about 31 players connected to that. Uh, let's see. Can I actually use my own server to do that? Say yes with this number. What does it say? It says that there's 34 players connected. If I refresh, well, it's still 34. How about I take another one? I take this one. Play chosencraft.com. No, I take F1 to do that. Uh, okay. There's about 83. There's right now 83, and, and uh, the website said about 84. So, this is it. This is working. Yeah. And uh, I will stop here for now. Uh, there is many more things that you can do. You can, uh, for instance, make sure the port is not always the same number because when you go into production, usually you want to have like some sort of uh, uh, launcher that will decide the port for you. Uh, you probably want also to implement some error handling, which we didn't get into, which is not a part. Uh, but mostly, this is how you do it. This is all the same. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Any questions? And stop it. Yes. Can we create a Mocha test for regular websites when the JavaScript is not in all JS environments? There's a way to do that. You want to create tests to what? Uh, test JavaScript uh, in a non non JS environment. In a non non JS from a regular website, for example. Okay, so you're saying that you're not in a JavaScript environment? But you want to write a test for that? I, I don't know. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Um, from a regular website. A website. So you have a website. Okay, so this is a website. Yes. And? Uh, how can we test the JavaScript from the website with Mocha scripts? Ah. Well, why would you want to do that? <laughs> why, why would you want to test code written by other people? No, my, my code. You could. Okay, so if you want to test the JavaScript that goes into uh, your page, uh, either you, you write uh, your code in a Node.js format and you can test it uh, directly on the shell, or you can use a tool. There, there are many tools, but uh, one that I've been using is called JustMine. Uh, uh, JustMine is uh, is exactly what you're uh, doing. It, just like it is, is a web page uh, uh, that actually um, uh, loads some JavaScript, and uh, in the JavaScript, if you have some tests, it will execute them and, uh, uh, and, and show you a report uh, on the web page. So that's one way of testing uh, what happens in the browser. Uh, so I would suggest you to go into this, uh, just like. I don't actually if you can see there's probably somewhere you, yes see um, this is how when you run the tests this is how it looks like so it's again pretty much been decided um, and and you can look more specifically into one test uh, <coughs> okay I will subject but this is here okay so you can you can uh, run one test or many tests at the same time some other question. Good, let's have lunch. Thank you very much for...